It's all part and parcel of the whole genie gig. Phenomenal cosmic powers! From this day forward, your names will be... Max Power? Dynamic, isn't it? I love it, Max. But I fell in love with Homer Simpson. I don't want to snuggle with Max Power. Nobody snuggles with Max Power. You strap yourself in and feel the cheese. Oh, Lord. There's three ways to do things. The right way, the wrong way, and the Max Power way. Isn't that the wrong way? Yeah, but faster. Oh! Nah, Max Power. I am the power! Oh, Stewie, you look like a new man. Well, will you look at me? I have the power! He's Let's imagine a staircase that's 10 meters tall. We're going to have two people run up the staircase, a boy and a girl. The girl has a mass of 20 kilograms and the boy a mass of 50 kilograms. They're going to go up the staircase and as you can see, the girl is going to finish her walk up the staircase in half a second and the boy is going to finish it in one second. Which of these two is more powerful? The girl did it faster, but she only had to fight a force of gravity of about 200 newtons, whereas the boy had to fight a force of gravity near 500 newtons. So while they both went the same distance, the girl only did about 2,000 joules of work while the boy did 5,000 joules of work. But work and power are not necessarily the same thing. Power is the rate of energy transfer. We do work. So, while the girl may have gone through the case faster, the boy did more work on the way to get to the top. So how can we compare these two things? We'll say then, if power is the rate of energy transfer, we can say that power equals the work we do divided by the time. And so back to our example. And so looking back at our example, we said that the girl did about 2,000 joules of work in half a second, and the boy did about 5,000 joules of work in one second. So let's see what our math would tell us. Over here we have power equals work over time. That would be 1,960 joules in half a second. The boy would be 4,900 joules divided by one second. So the boy is doing approximately 4,900 joules per second of work. And the girl is doing about 4,000 approximately joules per second. It has 4,000 joules per second of power. Which means, even though the girl completed the task faster, the boy would technically have more power, because, and that's because he had to move more mass over that same interval. Now, a joule per second is an interesting unit, but let's look at what power. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. What did I just say? The flux capacity stored. This sucker's electrical. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Great Scott! What? Well, what the hell? James Watt was a Scottish inventor and engineer, famous for his improvements to the steam engine. Watt was born in Scotland in 1736 and was mainly educated at home. He later attended Greenock Grammar School, where he showed great aptitude for mathematics and engineering. Watt studied instrument making in London for a year, and then returned to Scotland and settled in Glasgow. Watt obtained a job at the University of Glasgow repairing astronomical instruments, and set up a small workshop there. 
At the time, the atmospheric steam engine designed by Thomas Newcomen in 1712 was used as the primary steam engine in industry. Watt repaired a Newcomen engine in 1763 and realized that at least three quarters of the heat of the steam was wasted in the engine, making it very inefficient. Watt adapted the engine to a more efficient working model in 1765, but due to financial restrictions and the lack of iron workers with the skills available, a delay of ten years occurred where Watt was forced to take up other jobs. Watt then teamed up with John Wilkinson and successfully created the condenser required, and in 1776 the first engines were installed in commercial enterprises. Over the next five years various improvements were made to the engines with Watt's partner Matthew Bolton, resulting in the engine being used in various mills as well as waterworks and distilleries. Watt's invention led to great personal wealth and he retired in 1800. During his lifetime, Watt also patented the rotary engine, the double action engine, a document copying device, and he also researched bleaching techniques. He died in 1819, and the measurement of electrical power, the watt, was named in his honour.